Sound speeds. And if you do any kind of audio recording, then I'm sure you're familiar with the term signal to noise ratio. Signal is the sound that we care about versus noise, the sound that we don't care about. You want to have maximum distance between the two of them without, of course, clipping the signal that you care about. Now, there are three types of background noise. The first one is environmental noise, the noise of the room that you're in and the environment. Like, for example, air handlers in the building that you're in, air conditioners, if there's people in the other room talking, if there's a rumble in the building that you're in, traffic outside, any of these things and more go into the actual sound of the room and therefore if everything is as quiet as you could possibly get it, that is the noise floor of your room. If there's any kind of environmental noise that is definitely the loudest thing in your recording, and you've already killed everything else, there's really nothing else you can do except signal processing. But there's two other kinds of noise. One of them is the noise floor of your microphone. Electronically, a microphone can only be of a certain background noise and no lower. It can't be any lower, but it can certainly be higher. It doesn't matter what you put it through equipment-wise, preamplifiers, boosters, anything like that, the signal of the microphone is still going to be the same, and the noise floor is a constant because of the electronics involved. Then, of course, there is the interface mixer or recorder that you're going into next with your preamps are. There's going to be a noise floor on that. Usually it's very, very low. And that's the term EIN that you might have seen me report in other videos about. Between those three noises, the environmental noise is the one that you have to be most constantly aware of because that's the one that's most likely going to sync your project quicker than anything else. My recording environment here is very quiet, to put it technically, and I'm using a Neat Microphones King B2 for my microphone, which is low background noise, and I'm recording onto the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6, which has a very low EIN. So why is it that my background noise sounds this loud? Well, it's because as quiet as I was able to get it, I did not quiet the fans on my computer. And yes, I'm quite aware that because I'm recording on the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6, which is an external recorder, that I do not have to have my computer on. But don't sabotage this video before I even get going here. Let me sabotage it on my own. I can't speak for Macintosh users, but because I'm on a Windows PC, I have a tool available to me. If you open up Google.com, put in SpeedFan right there, one word, and then click on I'm Feeling Lucky or do a Google search and then click on SpeedFan, which is the top listing, it will bring you up on a free app that will allow you to control the fans on your computer after it does a scan of your computer to see what fans there are, provided there is not a physical switch that allows you to go from low, medium to high on your fan, this should help quite a bit. You can click on the download button up here and then click on speed fan right here to download this to your computer. Not only is it a free download, it's also free to use. It's a freeware after all. And if you click start once you've installed it, then it will first scan your computer and then present to you the fans that you have available to you. Now, if you look at my computer here, you notice that all my fans are set to 100 right now, which is going to be great if I'm gaming or doing anything that requires a lot of processor power because it's going to be maximum cooling efforts of all fans on this computer to try to keep my computer from overheating. However, if I go quiet, listen to this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero them all out and listen to what it does with the noise floor. Going quiet. That was a lot. You may be a little concerned about what might happen to your computer if you do kill your fans. Well, you might not need to kill them all the way. You might just dial them back a little bit. But let me ask you this. When you record your audio, are you doing something that requires a lot of processor power at the same time? Like, for example, rendering a video. Probably not. Are you playing a game, which is very graphics intensive and processor intensive at the same time? Probably not. But if you are, leave your fans on because you definitely want to have that cooling power on your computer. Chances are your, your sound on your computer and your game is going to be drowning out that audio anyway, so don't worry about it. But let me ask you this. If you turn on your computer and simply record your audio, what's the big deal? Your computer does not require a whole lot of very intensive amount of fans on that processor to keep that thing cool simply by recording audio which is very, very low in processor power. So you might want to give it a try.
If the fans on your computer are the biggest culprit in your audio recording, then this should help quite a bit. But if they're not, and there's other sources that you're hearing much louder, then you might want to kill those first before your computers. Handle the biggest sources and eliminate those and then work your way down to the quietest ones. And hopefully the fans are amongst the quietest noises that you have to deal with. Obviously, do this at your own risk. I didn't build your computer, I don't know your environment, so I cannot speak to whether or not it is 100% ideal for you. But what I will tell you is that if you want to reduce the amount of background noise in your audio recording, SpeedFan can certainly help you if you're on a Windows PC. Thanks for tuning into this episode of SoundSpeed. Be sure to tune in the future for more pro sound tips and tricks, little things that could help you drop the environmental noise in your recording, and of course, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.